Hi kids, it's Reverend James here with Children's Time. Today we're going to talk about friendship because in our gospel reading today, Jesus says to us that we are his friends and there is no greater love than this to lay down your life for one's friends. As Jesus has laid down his life for us, rose on Easter, and now we're his friends. We're all brothers and sisters in Jesus. So I'd like you to uh, take a look at the gospel reading from today here. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends because I have told you everything I have heard from my father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain so that whatever you ask the father in my name, he may give you this I command you. Love one another. So when Jesus says we're his friends, what does that mean? Friendship is um, obviously different. We have different types of friends. We have best friends. We have acquaintances. When we start off as really young kids, friends are people that we play games with and we go to have fun with. And as we grow, friends eventually become the people we're deeply, deeply connected with, that we have this fierce loyalty to them, we do anything for them, anything to help them, we've got their back and we know they got our back too. Uh, but take a look at some other kids' interpretation of friendship. Jesus gives, gives us his commandments because he wants us to be joyful. Jesus wants us to be truly joyful. Without love, we can't be truly joyful. Jesus is our very, very best friend. Jesus loves me. Jesus is love. Jesus is our friend because he tells us what's best for us. Jesus loves me. Jesus wants us to raise our full potential. So I'd like to share with you a, a little story about friendship, about two girls who became friends in a refugee camp. And they end up sharing something and sharing it uh, this thing together, sandals, a pair of sandals, uh, make some friends and, and bonds them for, hopefully, for, for all their lives. And it also shows how sometimes being a friend involves making sacrifices for your friends to help them, just as they make sacrifices to help you. And um, it's a beautiful story, and uh, I want you to check it out now. Here, here it is. Four Feet, Two Sandals written by Carolyn Williams and Kadra Mohammed, illustrated by Doug Chakra. Just an author's note, people who flee their country because of fear of persecution are called refugees. At the time we were writing this story, which is 2007, there were more than 20 million refugees worldwide. The majority of refugees are children. This story is based on Kadra's experience with refugees in Peshawar, a city on the Afghanistan-Pakistan border. Decades of war and instability in Afghanistan have forced millions of Afghani people to flee their homes to neighboring countries. Many of them live in makeshift camps in and around Peshawar. Some, like Lena and her family, are able to find safe haven in resettlement countries in Europe, the U.S., or Canada. Though this story is based on a camp in Peshawar, the experiences of children like Lena and Feroza are shared by millions of refugees around the world. So just a reminder of some of the words that you'll hear. Again, a refugee is a person who runs away from their country because of violence, war, or persecution. A refugee camp is a temporary place for refugees to live where they can be protected and receive help. Relief workers are people who work to provide help to people in need, especially in disaster areas. And 
In this story, we'll hear refugees from Afghanistan, which is the green country here, who have escaped to Pakistan, which is the orange country. Four feet, two sandals. Lena raced barefoot to the camp entrance where relief workers threw used clothing off the back of a truck. Everyone pushed and fought for the best clothes. Lena squatted and reached, grabbing what she could. The crowd began to leave. In the dust, dust at Lena's feet lay a brand new sandal. It was yellow with a blue flower in the middle, and when she slipped it on her foot, it fit perfectly. Lena was ten, but she had not worn shoes for two years. She looked around for the matching sandal. A girl stood nearby. She was thinner and darker than Lena, and she wore a blue and yellow sandal. Assalam alaikum, Lena greeted her. Peace be with you. The girl only stared. She was dressed in a shalwar kameez. Her feet were cracked and swollen, as Lena's had been when she first arrived in camp. Suddenly, the girl turned, taking the matching sandal with her. In the morning, Lena went to do the washing, wearing one beautiful sandal. She picked her way up to the stream, careful to keep her sandal out of the filth. Her old shoes had been ruined on the many miles of walking from Afghanistan to Peshawar, the refugee camp in Pakistan. She had carried her brother Najib, no bigger than a water jug then, but just as heavy. When she looked up from her scrubbing, the girl from yesterday was standing over her. She wore one sandal that she bent over and removed. Grandma says it's stupid to wear only one. She placed the sandal at Lena's feet. Then she turned and walked away. Wait, Lena grabbed both sandals and followed her. I am Lena. The girl turned slowly. I am Feroza. Lena held the sandals out. We can share. What good is one sandal for two feet? Feroza frowned. You wear them both today, and I will wear them tomorrow, Lena smiled. Four feet, two sandals. Feroza smiled too. She took the sandals and put them on. Tomorrow they will be yours. The two girls greeted each other as they carried their jugs for water the next day. Lena put the sandals on, and they waited together in the long line. Everyone in the camp was waiting for a new home. Mama went to meetings about being resettled. The girls stayed in Lena's tent with Ismatu and Najib. They were careful to keep the sandals away from the two boys for Ismatu wanted to pull at the flowers, and Najib wanted to chew on them. My father and sister were killed in the war, Lena told her friend. Mom and I had to run with Ismatu and Najib in the night. Feroza nodded, and two tears ran down her cheek. I only have my grandmother now. When they did not have work to do, Lena and Froza crept up to the windows of the school and peeked inside. The school was small, with only enough room for the boys to study. The girls practiced their names in the dirt and brushed the marks away so no one would see their mistakes. Sometimes each girl wore one sandal. Other children pointed and giggled, but Lena and Froza didn't care. In the evenings, the sky turned deep blue, and the first stars began to sparkle. Lena and Feroza watched for the silver of the crescent moon that signaled the beginning of Ramadan. They shared memories and whispered their dreams for a new home. One morning, they went to the stream and washed their sandals to keep them looking new. Lena, come quick, Feroza's grandmother called her. Your mother says your name is on the list. Feroza grabbed the sandals. The two girls ran ahead to the office. 
Lena stood on tiptoes and squinted at the sign. Mama's name, it's here. We are going to America. She looked at her friend. My name is not there, Rosa said quietly. She looked at her feet as she spoke. Then she bent down and took the sandals off. She handed them to Lena. You cannot go barefoot to America. Froza gave Lena a hug. When it was time to leave, the relief worker gave Mama a large square white bag with numbers on it. All of your important papers are in this bag, he said. Froza and her grandmother came to say goodbye. Lena pointed at her feet. Look, Mama saved her sewing money. She has brought us shoes for America. Real shoes, Froza admired the new black leather. Here, Lena said, it is your day, day to wear these. The tears in her eyes were not for the sandals. Assalam alaikum, Froza said, as she took the faded yellow and blue sandals. Peace be with you. Lena followed the others to the bus. Wait, Froza called as she ran to her friend. You must keep one. She handed Lena one sandal. What good is one sandal? It is good to remember. Feroza held up the other sandal. Four feet, two sandals. Lena felt the tears make a trail down her cheek. She slipped the sandal into her bag and climbed on the bus. Feroza rang al ran alongside as the bus began to move. Lena leaned out the window. We will share again in America, she called. The end. So in these really difficult circumstances, Lena and Froza became best friends and uh, cared for each other so much, they're willing to share their sandals with each other. And hopefully that sandal that, that each of them keeps is a reminder of their friendship that they'll remember forever. And who knows, hopefully one day they'll be able to see each other again in a much better place a much safer place in their lives. So uh, to bring to close our, our children's time today, we'll pray together the Lord's Prayer using our actions. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace, guys. Take care. Bye.